there's an attack on weak hadith in our time. We, we, a weak hadith is, is anywhere from a B minus to a D minus. All right? A Hassan hadith is, is a B to an A minus. And then a Sahih hadith, I'm just using a language you can understand. An A minus is like a, 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 a Sahih hadith is from an A to an A plus to 100%. Mutawatir is 100%. Al-Bukhari is like 98%, 99%. Muslim and Bukhari, 99%. Uh, Sahih Muslim, 97%. So, the, the, uh, a weak hadith is not thrown out. <laughs> Just like a professor doesn't throw out a paper that, that gets a D-. minus. It didn't flunk. It passed. And so, when the ulama say it's a weak hadith, it passed. In other words... It's something that cannot be proven to not have been said by the Prophet. The, the probability that he said it is, is far greater than the probability that he didn't say it. So it's called a hadith da'if because it, it's, it, there, the margin of error is greater than in a hasan or a sahih. So how did the ulama deal with that? The ulama dealt with it by saying that for fabail al-amad, those actions that are virtuous, uh, you could do, use a weak hadith if it was a virtuous action and it didn't relate to a hukum. In Aqibah, the opinion of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi is the hadith has to be mutawatir. That you can't, that's why a hadith like the Nur al Muhammadi, which is an Ahad hadith, uh, is not used in Aqibah. Or the hadith that تعرض علي عمالكم or عمال أمتي in al Bazar, which is a Sahih hadith. So, the ulama don't reject weak hadith. They don't. And the, so this argument against the weak hadith is, is, uh, is a weak argument. And that is why Imam al ozai who was one of the great imams of the ulama, and who was as learned as the four imams in fiqh and, and, and the sites of Islam, they said that he answered over 70,000 questions with Qala Allah or Qala Rasulullah. You know, I asked one of my Mauritanian teachers, how's that possible? He said, he said, come in su'ad yujab will be in the mal'amad bin niyad. He said, how many questions are answered with in the mal'amad bin niyad? You know, so, but he was a master of the meal and hadith. He was of the opinion that Nusul Sha'ban was ma'mul that people should, Ihya uh, layl is a good night. Imam Malik karihahu, like Ibn al-Hajj said in al-Madkhal. The later Malikis tended to, to consider it an important night. I'm sure, I don't know, in Sudan, do they, is Nas Sha'ban, is it, some of them, and some don't. Yeah, so that's the way it is in Mauritania. Some of the ulama take it, the other ones don't. So it's one of those issues, I personally, like I said, you know, I, I was, only, you know, recently that I uh, did anything on Nus Sha'ban, but I personally benefited on Nus Sha'ban, personally. That was my personal experience. So, but uh, in, in Tarim, they do, in the first Yasin, they make the intention of, of spending a long life in worship. In the second Yasin, with the intention of protection from calamities. And in the third Yasin, with the intention of being in need only of Allah and freed from the need, need of others. So getting your debts fulfilled, all those things. So that's a practice that the Habari Madu, the Ulama do, the Ba'alui. Uh, you know, again, it's based on the Hadith of Yasin. It's, it's, you know, that Yasin is, you get the intention of what you read it for. So if you read it with a Niyyah, then you, 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 it has that blessing. I had something stolen, you know, from me years ago. It wasn't mine. It was actually some, this is a true story. You know, w when you first become Muslim, it's very interesting, your hard, you know, it's a good hard to be in. Like Imam Zaid and I kind of lament those days because uh, it's just an amazing hard when people, like the, we have a guest here, Fred Wise. I don't think he's here tonight. Is Fred here? Yeah, but he's been here. People have been with him. You know, he's a brand new Muslim and he's just like, you know, he's really in a nice state. But, uh, you know, I something got stolen. I was on a train, and this thing was, it was a 
a really expensive and I put it on the cargo thing. It was a stupid thing to do. But like I said yesterday, you know, I do stupid things. So, but I put it on the, the, the in, in the cargo arm. So when I got to the place, I, this is in England, and I'd had such a hard time getting this thing. I was doing it for somebody else. So I get there, and I go in, and it's not there. I was just devastated because I had to go tell this person. This thing was a really expensive item. I had to go tell this person that uh, it wasn't there. So there was a Nigerian man there, you know? And uh, when I got to this place, I told him what happened. I was completely devastated. I really was in a state of shock. He said, read 41 Yassins. I guarantee you it'll come back. <laughs> so I swear to God, I spent the whole night reading 41 Yassins. I really did. I just read 41 with total and utter belief in what he was telling me. The next morning, and it won't mind it, as Allah is my witness. The next morning I went to the train station. It was just there. Right in, <laughs> right on the corner. Open. Anybody could have taken it. What line? You know, so when you have that email, even if it's like a bidda or it's something, it's like Allah is so generous. With sincerity, you know, <laughs> if you really believe something. So now it's always better to do what the Prophet Sallallahu did, no doubt. But Yasin is a great gift to this Ummah from Allah. It's the heart of the Quran. And Yasin has incredible efficaciousness. It really does. Mujarrab. You know, the, this is what the, the ulama in the books they say Mujarrab. It's been tried and tested. So don't listen to people say, Bid'ah, weak hadith, you know, <laughs> trust me, mujamrat. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Zakam Allah